Our five-year-old has been sick, got to love the return of breakfast and fruit pastels. Richard and Gabby are from on the A21. Oh, good luck. Um, also, the T-shirt is nearly dry, um, so sorry to, sorry to rile them for the damp smell, um, but it is there. OK, this is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker, and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at 11 o'clock. This is Mike Powell. The government has insisted the incoming Prime Minister will want to consider all options before drawing up a strategy to help households with surging gas and electricity bills. The Chancellor, Nadim Zahawi, has said even middle-income earners on around £45,000 a year are likely to need assistance. Ministers have also urged people to cut back on energy usage. But Nick Butler, who's a former head of strategy at BP, says that's not always easy. It's a fair comment, but I hope he realises that many consumers don't have the capacity or ability to do that. They're not using that much because they can't afford that much. And I think he would be better advised to combine it with saying now that this increase in the cap is not going to be applied. The government is responsible for this and is going to find solutions. Even if he doesn't produce all the solutions at once, I think he should reassure people. Detectives in Liverpool are questioning a second man in connection with the murder of Olivia pratt Corbell, the nine-year-old who was shot dead at her home on Monday night. The 33-year-old suspect was detained on suspicion of murder last night. A 36-year-old man was arrested on Thursday. Yesterday, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, announced a half a million pound funding package for the area. The Liverpool City Metro Mayor, Steve Rotherham, says it's welcome, but more is needed. There's trauma support within this package to the community and, of course, to the children and the staff at Olivia School, for example. Then we move on to the longer-term counselling and mental health support that will be needed um, there had to be some crime reduction interventions in the package as well, all to support and rebuild the community. And that's where the voluntary and community sector will play a huge part in that. At least 50 more people have died in Pakistan following torrential downpours and flash floods. Nearly a thousand people have been killed in rains and floods since June. Campaigners and opposition parties have condemned the government's plans to tackle sewage discharges into England's rivers and the sea, saying the targets set out are flimsy. The Environment Secretary, George Eustace, claims the current government is the first to tackle the problem, which is a legacy of ageing infrastructure. But the singer and environmental campaigner Fergal Sharkey is not impressed with the strategy. Not only is it not good enough, I'm afraid government have actually created an even bigger shambles than existed before. When I woke up yesterday morning, dumping sewage into rivers and onto beaches was illegal outside of exceptional circumstances. By yesterday afternoon, government have now legalised water companies to dump sewage in our rivers and on our beaches for at least the next 28 years. Cricket, England's bowlers will be looking for early wickets as play gets underway on day three of the second test against South Africa. The tourists are currently 23 without loss, still trailing by 241 runs. BBC News, it's three minutes past 11. On the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. Now, Rob Beckett. BBC Radio 2. Thank you, Mike. 